via msn.com from the guardian we're not going anywhere seattle's chop zone dismantled but cause lives on the occupied protest zone near downtown seattle known as the capitol hill organized protest or chop effectively came to a swift end early wednesday morning when officers largely cleared the area of people and encampments despite some protests lingering overnight into Thursday. Now, activists say the relationships built and lessons learned over the last three weeks in the self-proclaimed police-free zone have already had a lasting impact that will live on past the physical presence of CHOP. As Rick Kern said, who had become head of security at CHOP, we won, we're winning, we made history. Look what we did here, the world saw it. But the protest area also became the location of a series of nighttime shootings, which left a 16-year-old boy, a 19-year-old man dead, and several others seriously injured. In a series of tweets Wednesday afternoon, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin highlighted the violence in the zone, saying the recent public safety threats have been well documented, and this violence demanded action. She said, our conversations over the weekend made it clear that many individuals would not leave and that we couldn't address these critical public, public safety concerns until they did. The autonomous zone emerged organically following a series of dangerous clashes between protesters and law enforcement during marches against police brutality, sparked by the killing of George Floyd. Officers in Seattle abandoned their East Precinct buildings as demonstrations closed in, after which protesters camped out around it with the intention of protecting the building from possible destruction that might be blamed on them. In the days that followed, hundreds more joined, and suddenly several blocks of the city streets were teeming with people of different ethnicities and socioeconomic backgrounds focused on calling for the defunding of the city's police department, echoing such protest cries emerging coast to coast, which can mean diverting money budgeted for police departments to social and education services, or even dismantling an entire department and restructuring the law enforcement system. And they wanted an end to police brutality against black people. We're going to organize sit-ins. We're going to span the city officials. We're going to show up, Jesse Livingston said. It was a space where people came to learn. We screened documentaries. We found people's assemblies every day where people had the opportunity to speak and share their feelings and ideas. We put on educational events every single day, she told the Guardian. We had a space called the Conversation Cafe where people could come to learn about racism and to talk about it in ways they don't get to do in their daily lives. It's for not only important conversations and learning, but also lasting bonds, which have since resulted in the organizing of anti-racist protests and the creation of social justice groups. So the Seattle Black Collective Voice, today there are about 40 people involved with the collective. Uh, as uh, Jesse said, we would not have been able to come together and engage in the work that we're doing if it had not been for CHOP. Ah, oh, the, the name change, too bad, part of the decline. Um, so there's, there's a lot of great legacy and lesson here. There's a lot of, you know, I, I suppose this is it. This is the, this is the post-mortem for Chaz CHOP. Uh, declaring an autonomous zone was so much more meaningful and powerful than organized protest. But they did successfully operate as an autonomous zone for a significant period of time. It was a beautiful experiment in defying authority. And I'm not just to, just to preempt the trolls on this one, I'm not identifying ideologically with any of the leftists. Uh, I'm a voluntarist, libertarian, right center of the nonsense, left-right spectrum, really to transcend it to a different realm of ethics applied to politics rather than aesthetics using the force of government to make the world or our country look the way that we want it to. So... This is a really exciting thing to celebrate that this happened. You know, I, I, there, I, I'm very confident in saying that there was subterfuge, there was sabotage, there was infiltration of this effort. Just changing the name itself might have been done by some kind of manipulation. Uh, the infiltration just by even activists who had other things in mind. 
for example, uh, you know, could have been conservatives infiltrating the Antifa element with their faces completely covered going in and getting a little rowdy. Yeah, maybe maybe there's some of that. Maybe there's just you know, people of, of, of different competing lefty factions and the, and the lack of being united with a clear purpose or mandate or just a, a charter for this thing from the beginning that signed on that was associated with creation, making it perhaps more deliberate and thoughtful as opposed to spontaneous. <clears throat> it might have made it a lot more sustainable. And uh, I suppose at this point, it's clear I have to concede that, that I was wrong about the sustain, I predicted that this was going to go at least a few more months, more like Zakati Park with Occupy Wall Street. Uh, I thought that uh, you know Jeff Dice and I, you know, were on the same page about that. Now we were wrong; yeah, it happened. But uh, still, want to celebrate this and say good for the people who made it happen and for paving the way for a lot more defiance of authority and, and shaking up. Uh, our presumptions about the system that we live with today.